Uh, my name is Anvu. Cool. And what is your connection to the event tonight? Um, so I work with the Kitty Anderson Youth Science Center at the Science Museum of Minnesota. And so I um, manage a group of teens called the Climate Change Crew. And tonight they're showing off their FAFAM app. So it stands for Frogtown Food Access Map. Um, and the map is trying to encourage uh, Frogtown residents to use uh, the food resources in their neighborhood. So it could be um, restaurants, it could be um, gardens, it could be food shelves, but like places that offer healthy options. And that's what the app does. Is it, it's kind of like an app in it, or a map, and then it shows the points on the map, and you can click on them. Um, and then it also incentivizes people to use it. So, okay. yeah. So how did this uh, idea get thought of? Um, so, yeah, this, so this summer uh, we identified uh, that we wanted to work with Frogtown Farm. Um, and then uh, the youth were in charge of um, exploring issues that they cared about. So we, they as a team, use uh, computer programming to address food justice issues. So they just... Um, they knew they wanted to work on some issue related to that in the community. So we identified Frogtown Farms as a partner, and then we started talking to them. We held a workshop with them to talk to them, like, what are some common problems you experience? Um, and some of the youth um, youth team um, said that they, when they went out into the community and they tried to get people to use this food access map, it was kind of, there wasn't enough information and it was also a paper map and so they felt like maybe it wasn't the most accessible thing to use. You're not going to grab a paper map wherever you go, but maybe an, like an app on your phone might be something you want to use. So we did identify that like we wanted to make it um, like really easy to use and you to be able to use without data if your phone didn't have data but um, when you have Wi-Fi you can at least download the app so it works in offline and online mode and so it was really driven by the youth um, working with the partner to understand what the partners needs are and then um, yeah making the app from there yeah Yeah, um, I'm trying to think of a good one. Food tradition. Um, there's so many good ones. Let me. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So one I know I, I really like is called Asgoiku, um, and it's spring rolls. And so um, I've done this with my family, and I've done this with friends. Is that um, it's you know it's got like simple ingredients. So it could be tofu, it could be shrimp, noodles, um, vegetables. Um, and everyone just kind of like you have all the ingredients in the middle of the table and you just grab the ingredients and you kind of sit down and you make the food um, while you're eating it. So it's, I don't know, it's an easy way to participate. And um, yeah, it, yeah, it's like simple and fresh and easy. Cool. Um, anything else you might like to add about food access? And are you a frog town? Do you live in frog town? I don't know. I live in Minneapolis. Okay. Anything you would like to add about food access in your specific neighborhood? Um, so I'm really, yeah, yeah. So I guess like with Frogtown, um, yeah, I don't live here, but, um, a lot of my work is based here. And then a lot of like friends I have are, um, living in the area. And I just think that it's, it's an amazing opportunity for, um, I don't know. There's just a lot of exciting energy around getting, uh, the Frogtown neighborhood to be, um, a food hub and a place to come to when it comes to like thinking about like innovative, uh, ways to like create a healthier community and also to like give to create jobs in the community so yeah there's just like a lot of good energy um that's going around with that um and then as far as like my own community is concerned i live in south minneapolis um it's the i just moved there the lindale neighborhood i it's like near kingfield um but there is the like the seward friendship co-op that just moved in and i think that was like really interesting because people were, um, you know, were keeping their eye out on whether that was going like, to gentrify the community, um, and I think that's something like important to talk about is like how do we like create healthy foods and places in our neighborhoods, but without like disenfranchising the community, and especially since co-ops sometimes like they tend to be like you know 
expensive and maybe like who has access to like being able to afford that. So I think the community really pushed on the co-op to make sure that like people could afford the food there and that they were hiring people from the community, right? So like it's great that they pay $15 an hour, but who's getting hired for there? Like people who already know about co-ops. So they made a really, I mean, the Seward co-op also I think was intentional at least and they worked together to make sure that like people from the neighborhood were the ones that are seeing, seeing the the benefits of it and working there so like it's been cool like every time I go in there I don't know like it's super friendly and it's good to see people of color um yeah at your co-op Definitely. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm.